We start on May 14, 1948, when Israel declared its independence on the territory of the former British Mandate of Palestine. It was immediately recognized by other nations. However, neighboring Arab countries were discontent with the emergence of the new republic and deployed their forces to capture Jewish lands. In the official statement of the Arab League, their goal was proclaimed to be the creation of a united Palestinian state across the entire territory. Nevertheless, Israel, the United States, and the Soviet Union condemned the Arab country's invasion of Palestine as unlawful aggression, while China supported the League's demands. Starting on May 15th, Israeli cities and airfields were subjected to constant raids by the Egyptian Air Force. Tel Aviv, in particular, was attacked on the first day of the invasion. Egyptian ground forces initiated their advance in the Gaza area and landed north of the city. By May 29th, Egyptian forces had advanced to the city of Ashdod, just under 30 kilometers from Tel Aviv. Israel finally managed to halt their progress. Another grouping of Egyptian forces launched an offensive in the northeast towards Beersheba, cutting off the Negev from major Jewish settlements on the coast. A few minutes before midnight on May 15th, King Abdullah of Transjordan arrived at the eastern part of the Allenby Bridge. At midnight, he fired a shot into the air, giving the command to his troops, consisting of four battalions, to cross the Jordan River and invade the Western Bank. The Arab Legion forces began the capture of Jerusalem. By May 28th, they had forced Jewish forces in the Old City to surrender. The commander of the Transjordanian army remarked with satisfaction, for the first time in a thousand years, there are no representatives of the sacred nation in the Old City, and they will not return here anymore. Although Western Jerusalem remained under Israeli control, the road connecting Jerusalem and Tel Aviv was cut, and communication along it ceased. The Arab Legion managed to capture the ford near Latrun, controlling this road. The attacks by Jewish forces on the ford were unsuccessful. The Iraqi army was tasked with gaining control of the Iraq Petroleum Company's pipelines. However, on May 15th, the Jews blew up all the bridges across the river and held their ground in this area. By May 24th, the Iraqi army, having crossed the Jordan again, occupied the so-called Triangle, which included the Arab cities of Jenin, Tulkarm, and Nablus. On the 1st of June, Israeli forces, comprising three battalions, attempted to take Jenin, facing only a few companies of Iraqi soldiers and local militia. Israel managed to reach the city center, but a flanking attack by a fresh Iraqi battalion, coming from Nablus, routed one of the Jewish battalions and the others followed suit in retreat. Syrian forces launched an offensive along the southern coast of the Sea of Galilee. By May 18th, they had captured nearby settlements, but by early June, they were pushed back. By June 10th, Syrians had initiated an advance north of the Sea of Galilee and, in heavy fighting, seized a small area of Israeli territory. The attacks of the Lebanese group were repelled, after which Israeli forces were redeployed to Jerusalem. However, by June 6, the combined forces of Syrians and Lebanese regrouped and attacked Malkia, capturing it. From there, Arab forces advanced into central Galilee, predominantly inhabited by Arabs, and established a presence in the region. On May 31, 1948, the Israel Defense Forces were established. Thanks to weapon supplies from abroad, primarily through European countries, and financial aid from Jewish organizations in the United States, Israel was able to launch a counteroffensive in June 1948. The main flow of weapons to Israel came by air from Czechoslovakia with the support of the Soviet Union, and seemingly with such assistance, there might have been a need to regroup or formulate a new tactic. However, on June 1st, several Israeli planes struck the Jordanian capital, Ammon. In response, there was an immediate bombing of Tel Aviv on June 3rd, resulting in the defeat of the Egyptian Air Force.
It began on June 11, 1948. During the ceasefire, the Israeli side managed to significantly rearm, bringing in dozens of light and medium tanks by sea. The Israeli Air Force was reinforced with Messerschmitts and American Mustangs. Meanwhile, Arab armies were mainly re-equipping with small arms. Both sides of the front saw an influx of tens of thousands of new soldiers, including the addition of Sudanese expeditionary forces to the Egyptian troops. As a result, another country joined the war against Israel. Approximately 4,000 veterans of World War II from the Allied forces joined the Israeli army. In the north, the IDF, during Operation Dekel, successfully cleared the Lower Galilee from Arab forces, extending from Haifa to the Sea of Galilee. The city of Nazareth came under Israeli control, with the Arab population remaining in place, having agreed to surrender almost without resistance in exchange for the Israeli command's promise not to deport the city's residents. By July 18th, a new ceasefire was reached between the parties, lasting until October 15, 1948. On that day, the Israeli army, violating the ceasefire, launched Operation Yoav against Egyptian forces to gain control of the Negev. The official pretext for the operation was the violation of the ceasefire terms by the Egyptian side. After the resumption of hostilities in the north, the Syrian army was repelled, and the Arab Liberation Army was defeated on Lebanese territory. In the south, the city of El Arish was captured, putting Egyptian units at risk of encirclement. In the center of the country, the Israelis took control of areas to the south and north of Jerusalem and unblocked the road to the city. Eastern Jerusalem and significant parts of Judea and Samaria remained under the control of Transjordanian forces. In early 1949, under the auspices of the UN, direct negotiations took place between Israel and all warring parties except Iraq, which refused to engage in talks that led to agreements on ceasefire lines. Ceasefire agreements were reached with Egypt, Lebanon, Transjordan, and Syria. It was the bloodiest war in Israel's history, with Israeli casualties reaching about 6,000. About half of the territory designated for the Arab state and western Jerusalem were occupied by Israel. The remaining Arab territories, as well as eastern Jerusalem, were occupied by Transjordan and Egypt and remained under their control until 1967. 